Hello, and welcome to Our Devotions, where together we're developing lives with God at the center. I'm Pastor Daniel, and this is my amazing wife, Pastor Amanda. Hello. Today we're going to talk about alcohol, starting off in the book of Habakkuk. So grab your Bible and get ready to jump right in with us. So alcohol is a topic that a lot of people do not appreciate being spoken about. Nobody wants to give it up. They have an opinion. But what does the Bible have to say? And there's some some things that are clear and some things that are uh, less clear. Uh, but check out Habakkuk 2.5 and uh, really 5 and 15 really get into a couple of things here. So. so verse 5 says, Moreover, wine is treacherous and betrays the arrogant man so that he does not stay at home. His appetite is large as Sheol and he is like death, never satisfied. He gathers to himself all nations and collects to himself all peoples. Going through the the alcohol um, causes him to be uh, unsatisfied and to go out in a a foolish manner. Uh, check out Habakkuk two fifteen. Woe to you who make your neighbors drink, who mix in your venom to make them drunk, so that you may look at their nakedness. Um, when you begin to look at this, you, there often the conversation goes: Is it a sin to drink? alcohol. And I just want to start out real clear going, the Bible is very clear that it is a sin to get drunk. Um, that having a drink of alcohol is not a sin. But we catch this and he goes, oh, they're trying to get people drunk so that people will do things that are shameful. Right. So that people will do things that they would not do if they were thinking clearly. And obviously of, of, I mean, that that's sinful. If he's trying to get his neighbor to expose the, themselves um, by getting them drunk, but when you you look and go, this is an old tactic that's still playing out today. Yeah, people are still trying to get others drunk to get them to violate moral lines that they hold. Right, um, and it's it's so common. I remember. Uh, being on vacation years ago and going into a like a souvenir shop and they had funny t-shirts and in amongst the funny t-shirts it's like drink until i'm pretty and Gosh. and there there was all of these different like shirts all along these lines recognizing and advertising the fact that they are getting so drunk that it changes how they view the world and it yeah. changes what lines they still have I remember hearing songs about what kind of alcohol makes people clothes fall off. And like just uh, this idea that alcohol causes people to do things that they wouldn't do when they were thinking clearly. It has been used to get people to violate their lines since early on. We find Noah, um, who was a righteous man, but goes and gets, once he has a vineyard, he ends up getting drunk and then lays around naked. Um, and, and there's a whole story around what happens there. And you look at Lot's daughters when they're hiding with Lot and go, hey, we need to have kids. Dad's the only guy around. He wouldn't do that. Let's get him drunk. Yeah. He get, they get him drunk. He doesn't even realize that he slept with his daughter and gets drunk again, sleeps with his other daughter, gets them both pregnant without even really realizing it because he was so drunk. And we look and we go, oh, that's awful. But, but alcohol dulls the senses and causes people to do things that they wouldn't normally do. Right. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, we're given, a, given directions and a warning. It says, be sober, be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. I like the, so it's got, I'm reading the Amplified. So part of it says, be sober, well-balanced, and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. When alcohol dulls the senses and it warns us, hey, you're in a fight. You have an enemy. You need to be ready at all times for the temptation. You need to be ready for all the, the lies and the, of the um, and fiery darts that the enemy's going to send at us. Alcohol, it starts it with the word, be sober. 
Yep. Because it wants you to be alert. And alcohol so damages that. I remember we used to do a lot of paintball with the students. And so you get in there and it's going to be a paintball battle and everyone's shooting each other with, with uh, paintball guns. And they, they don't feel pleasant when you get hit. But it's not a big deal. Unless you were to get hit in the eye. That would definitely hurt. That could be a, a matter of blindness. And so everyone has to wear a face mask. But all the time people complain, I don't like my face mask. It's too hot. It's too uncomfortable. And regularly, as a ref, we'd have to holler at a kid to put back their, like, you have to keep your mask on. And you're trying to be nice and have fun with the kids, but you have to push that one really serious. Because they can get over there and be like, but it's just more comfortable. I just want to take it off for a minute. But you're in a battle. Yeah. Like, someone's trying to shoot you. And if you pull it off just at the wrong moment, um, that moment may turn out to be blindness. Right. Like it's it's a huge deal. And so we would have to crack down on this rule. And we we were very loving and told them ahead of time that we'll be very stern with this rule because we want everyone to leave whole. Right. <laughs> um, this isn't a matter of, who, of liking somebody or not liking somebody. But I look in this paintball where the stakes are really low and go, it's we made such a big deal out of that you stay armored even when it's uncomfortable, even if your mask starts to fog up, you have to keep your eyes covered. Yeah. And then we go into the battle in life where the enemy is trying to kill, steal, and destroy our life, our marriage, our family. And it's so common that people are like, well, I just need to relax. And not realizing that if you're taking off your armor, if you're taking off your alertness, if you're disarming your self-control, yeah. that you have m become a sitting duck. Yeah. And we have an enemy that wants to destroy. And alcohol, like self-control is part of the fruit of the spirit. But alcohol damages self-control. Right. And it, it off. And it's marked and defined as a... Um, as it listed as a, drunkenness is listed as a work in the flesh. Right. Um, and so it, it's an area that I want to encourage everyone to look and to go, yes, I want to honor God and not sin, but I want to make sure that I stay um, sober minded right. and watchful because our enemy, the devil, goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's say our confessions together. I am loved by God. I am loved by God. The same power. The same power. That raised Christ from the dead. That raised Christ from the dead. Lives in me. Lives in me. I fix my eyes on God. I fix my eyes on God. And he fills me with his peace. He fills me with his peace. I resist the devil. I resist the devil. And he flees from me. And he flees from me. My prayers are powerful. My prayers are powerful. And effective. And effective. No evil shall befall me. No evil shall befall me. Nor shall any plague nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. Come near my dwelling. For God shall give his angels. For God shall give his angels. Charge over me. Charge over me. To keep me in all my ways. To keep me in all my ways. I am filled with the grace. I am filled with the grace. And power of God. And power of God. I take every thought captive. I take every thought captive. And make them obey God. And make them obey God. God, I ask that you would have your way in our lives, that nothing would hold us back, that there would be no area of compromise left in us to give the devil a foothold in our lives. God, we pray for freedom for those who've been struggling and addicted. God, we pray for um, healing and forgiveness where there's been damage. And God, we ask that you would guide and direct our steps and that your grace would strengthen us to follow your directions. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope this encouraged you. If it did, please like, share, and subscribe. And we invite you to get into God's Word for yourself each day to discover who He is and what He has for you. Be blessed. We'll see you again soon.